Welcome to hour one of the Patriots Lament. We call it the Saturday morning wake up call right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. Joining us in the studio today from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And we also have a person of unknown ethnic origin here in the studio. <laughs> Who I believe is not a native English speaker. Is that correct, Claudio? That's correct. All right. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Claudio. Thanks for being here. By the way, I just want to tell you both to pay no attention to the men in the armored personnel carriers going door to door, knocking down people's doors. Just wait inside with your door closed and wait for them to break it down. I'm sure that they will have the proper paperwork and the search warrants all in order at some later date. Right now, you just need to pay no attention to them, okay? What? What? Are you paying any attention to them? No. Attention to what? Well, I don't think anybody's paying any, any attention to it because, you know what, Fourth Amendment? Yeah, I'm just going to... Where's my uh, Where's my copy of the Constitution? There it is. <laughs> Darn. Don't need it. Don't need it. Done. Yeah, isn't that amazing? How many people were... We were just talking about this. Was there two million people there? Two, I think what it's... How many people are in Boston? I think it's two million. At least one million. No, it's oh, got to be too many. It's got to be. That's big least, I mean, No, yeah, it's more. It's got to be even more than that because the city of Phoenix has three million people in it, and I think Boston is bigger than Phoenix, isn't it? Either, either way, you've got all of these millions of people who be uh, some nameless, faceless bureaucrat. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do: is find who saying gave the order. everybody stay inside. Don't anybody go to work. Don't anybody go to school. Don't anybody go outside. The police are coming door to door, basically declaring martial law. Oh yeah, without any, without a declaration, and I, and uh, all these millions of people just went bah bah. I was re- I read somewhere where they were talking, where they were blowing out on their bullhorn. If you want to live, that was one of the things they were saying. Wow. While they were, if you want to live, stay inside. If you want to live, you're getting. <laughs> yeah, guys. You, you can't you can't read something silently and let the rest of us guess what it is you're reading. Okay, Boston right? celebrates martial law with chance of USA, USA. Yeah. Well, I, and you think about how scared the people of Boston were. I mean, first of all, you start with a terror attack. You start with the bombing on a completely. I mean, what could be more libertarian than a foot race? Everybody. I mean, think about it. That's a wonderful sport. Everybody's in it for themselves. There's no teams. It's just you competing against yourself for the best record, the best time you could possibly do. Somebody bombs it. It scares the absolute crap out of everybody in Boston and and the rest of the nation, basically, Mm -hmm. because we're so conditioned now to react with fear. Well, you had every, uh, not every, but how many representatives, talking heads and whatever were coming on the news and on TV and stuff and saying, this is the new America. This is the new norm in America today. You can expect. You can expect yeah. bombings like this to happen all the time. Every day in your own backyard. Well, and, and of course, then people, oh, keep us safe, Oliver make North us safe. What, what, how on earth Representative could King. possibly make the nation safe against that kind of attack? Two brothers. Just two brothers. 26 and 19? Or seven, 19, I think. And, I mean, they, they, the, the, it's not just the death toll from the attack, but the, I mean, the maiming. Holy smokes. I mean, it is an act of evil what they did. Yeah, a lot of people got hurt. Absolute act of evil. But then you look at how many millions of people after that willingly submitting to martial law without a declaration even being made officially. That right there, if, if that is the new norm in America... No, thank you. Yeah, this is the town of Boston, the hometown of Mr. Samuel Adams. The Boston Tea Party? They were under siege 200 and some years ago by the British Navy. And they were told the same thing. Stay in your homes. If you you want to live. If you want to live, stay in your homes. And they refused. And there was murders going on then. I don't know if the Boston Massacre was happening. The uh, troops were roaming around, arresting people, shooting people on sight. 200 and some years later. This is this the town where literally a lot of our freedoes that we have to do. Well, that we have to. Yeah. For, why, put, it in the past, put it in the past tense. Go this ahead. town, <laughs> a lot of radical patriotic, I don't know, freedom, liberty-loving people came from. I mean, a lot of 
what we know of today. A lot of the things that we talk about in our radio show from back whenever came from Boston, the Adams, John and Samuel. Fine beers, too. And today, they're just a bunch of stinking sheep. It's pretty path- I'm, It's sad. Pathetic. I mean, they're all... I saw some pictures <coughs> on Rockwell last night where the Rockwell.com. The whole town, they're showing pictures of different areas. No one anywhere. No one anywhere. Everyone just, please protect us. I <laughs> wonder how those people felt when they are sitting in their homes with no guns. <laughs> Well, they were good, they were good guys with guns out on the streets. Yeah, lots same. If you of, want to live, lots stay in and your lots home. of good guys with guns. I mean, you think about the narrative that gets painted, uh, and and whether it's from a state official, a statist, or whether it's somebody like the NRA, who still think about it. What is the the purpose of the NRA? It's to influence politics. So mm-hmm. they're still playing the statist game, and they and, and what's the NRA position? They say good guys with guns. That's the only way to stop bad guys with guns. Well, well, how about individuals? And being able to make their own decision. Yeah, I was telling you just a little while ago when um, I was listening to Schwan Hannity yesterday a little bit. Why do you torture yourself? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I torture myself so I can relay information to people on Saturday morning. So Schwan had this guy call in that was actually in one of the neighborhoods, and he said the the police or whoever, the military basically, was about a hundred and some yards away, going house to house and. So they're talking about it, and he's like, yeah, it's kind of scary, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, well, the guest, who's the guy, he goes, he said, it's, at the same time, it's kind of bothersome. He said, because, you know, they're kind of violating our rights. They're just barging in our homes. And uh, Sean just kind of, if you ever listen to him, when he, when you say something that's true, but he doesn't really want it to be talked about anymore, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the guy goes, you know, they're kind of violating our rights, you know, because we have right to privacy in our homes. You know, you know, you know, like, well, but, do, but with times like these, you know, we've got to do what we got to do and blah, blah, blah. And chuck it all out for the good of all. So, I mean, this is law, right? Well, what law was created to protect liberties, not the other way around. I mean, we have this idea that we have law, thus we have liberty. It's the opposite way. We have liberty, so law was created to protect liberty. And when the law is the usurper of that liberty, it's no longer the law. It's just tyranny. It's the plunderer. It's the plunderer of the liberty. Probably. I've been reading The Law by Friedrich Bossier. Oh, Bossier, you know. That's that's your problem, Josh. You read too much. You ought to just listen to what they tell you on the radio because then you'll know everything you need to know. Yeah. I mean, here, what what do we know about these terrorists from what's what's gone on the, on the news? They're a bunch of psychotic Muslims. Well, no. If you had listened to the first couple of broadcasts, we knew they were Tea Party members. Right? Oh, they were. They were white supremacists. Right. Or oh. see, I heard one thing that said that it probably will turn out to be a white guy with an AK forty seven in the back of his pickup. Yeah, they wished. Yeah. Well, it turns out these guys are, are Muslims that are originally born there in that Chechen area, actually Dagestan, came here to the United States when they were boys, and then went back over, and at some point they got radicalized. Now, how do you get radicalized, Josh, when you're living in the United States of America and drinking... The Kool-Aid? What? <laughs> the Kool-Aid? The Kool-Aid, exactly. How do you get radicalized in America? I don't know. I I, maybe you get recruited. There's different forms, or you get recruited by the FBI or the CIA. Now, here's, or, here's, you start piecing some of these things together, and I'm not, you know I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know how oh. hard it is to try to convince me of some so of your, you say. your crazy conspiracy. I know you are. But I, his mom, I and mean, we were seeing on the news, his, his mom was saying, look, the FBI has been talking with my boys for at least five years. Yeah. All right, you had reports coming out that the FBI had questioned these guys about their radical connections, but nothing was done with it. Debka file today. And by the way, this is one of my main sources for intelligence here in the in the morning show, Monday through Friday. Debka.com. These guys are spot on. Debka.com has found a connection now, saying basically that these two had been recruited by U.S. sources and sent back over there to Chechnya on the U.S. dime to infiltrate their cells. And then, while they got when they got sent back there, 
they ended up saying, you know what, I'm, we're going to take the terror back to the United States. <laughs> and now, this, and this ties into uh, some of the stuff that we were hearing from Ron Paul back in, uh, well, 2008 and again in 2012, that this idea of how can the United States expect not to have terror come back to our shores when we continue to export terror, when we continue to bomb women and children, when we continue to invade countries to, quote, bring them liberty? Democracy, spreading it throughout the... Eight, I thought about that same thing when... Uh, it must have been Glenn Beck the other morning. When I was going to work and he was talking about, well, we know who these people are. And he was talking in general sense. He wasn't really... Because we didn't know who these two kids were yet, or teenage, whatever they are, two brothers. And he said, these people, we know why they're radicalized. It's because of religion and because of this. And we, so he names off, you know, all these different things about why they're radicalized and why they hate us and everything. And I thought to myself, you left something pretty important out there, Chip. Maybe whoever did this is ticked off because, and this was just theorizing at the time, maybe we killed his their mom or maybe we killed their sister. Or maybe we killed their father. Maybe we blew up all their family. No, that can't be a reason why people get crazy radicalized. It's because of our freedom. <laughs> Blowback. What's happened with, uh, you know, we keep in drop bombs, those weddings down in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Well, that's where all the just, terrorists congregate. The terrorists are constantly, you know, marrying their weddings? daughters off and... Just in, yeah. To produce more terrorists, That's right. obviously. Same day as Boston that we we bombed some, was it was less wedding we bombed, was like more than 60 people died on a wedding. But those were 60 brown people, Claudio. I mean, you do the math. How do, how do 60 brown people add up to three whites that were killed in Boston? <laughs> how does that possibly add up? Well, it is a terrible thing, because like you said about the maiming, I guess several people lost arms and legs. And yeah. Bad deal. But at the same time, I mean, so how far are we going to let them control? I mean, is it not just as evil to bomb trust? a wedding as it is to bomb a race? I think so. Is it not just as evil to drop bombs indiscriminately on women and children than to set a pressure cooker bomb off? Yeah. So how, how can you fight evil with evil? <laughs> are, are you going, are you telling me that oh it's a necessary? I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go out there and murder in order to stop murders. Yeah, a lot of people say that. They call here and say that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's necessary. It's a little evil to fight the greater evil. Hmm. I guess we'll never learn until we figure out that doing good is a better way. But if you only do good, you're just going to end up dying because the evil will kill you. Yeah. You have to do evil to fight the evil, John. It is, it is good to protect yourself. I don't think it's good to murder. So, uh, the, the, last time, the last time I checked, I have not seen women and children coming into my home to hold me hostage. I have not seen women and children kicking down doors to, to search for somebody to exploit them. Generally speaking, women and children are not aggressors. And there are some women in the United States Army... Navy, Marines, Air Force. Well, there's some women voters. voters. Well, they're aggressive. They're, that's true, too. And some women in politics that are <laughs> quite dead. <laughs> but I mean, you think about it in terms of the principle behind it. I wonder if they use any drones. Women drones? Oh, yeah, there are lots of women. No, I mean, I wonder if they use any drones over Boston. You know what? <laughs> my first, un unfortunately, this is how jaded I'm getting now. My first thought when the bomb went off, oh, it was a drone strike. <laughs> it's a variant. <laughs> Because you know, is that's that's not, that's the way our drone strikes have become in Pakistan. I mean, we're we are killing people, killing dozens of people in order to get one target. Mm -hmm. Even even if it's okay to get that one target, is it okay to kill a dozen other people just to get that one? No, it's not. It's collateral damage, Josh. It's not. You know, we, we talked about that. Uh even in their own quote-unquote just war theory, it doesn't hold up, which I don't necessarily agree with. But even with that, it doesn't hold up. 
Now, where are we going to go with this? I'm just waiting to find out what great restrictions we're going to have put on us because we might have someone bomb someone. I mean, we have 300 million people here. The United States is ginormous. So I wonder what's going to happen to me and Fairbanks, what restrictions Fairbanks is going to have put on it because what happened in Boston. The worst terrorist attack in 12 years. And it is. It's not a good thing. But we'll just see how much the sheep will allow. Got to make look at hay how much we will. while the, sa- the yeah. sun shines. They bro. will make hay, brother. Well, and look at how look at how the power. Oh, this is what kills me: is the people in Boston just ro- not not just submitting to it, but asking for it. Yeah. Asking for the boot on the neck. Yeah, it's sad. It's time to get out of here. That you know, doesn't, whatever the government does, you expect it, right? Because they're they're crooks, they're thieves. They're murderers. They're rotten. That's just the nature of government. That necessary thing. <laughs> but when the people start acting the way they do or not acting, then it's time to roll smoke out of here. This is ridiculous. Two million people? Because we still don't know who gave this order to... I mean, I heard that the mayor was asking businesses to voluntarily shut down for the day. What? What? Why? Well, at and, and some point between a, a mayor asking someone voluntarily and then by the end of the day, stay in your homes if you want to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it's a scary thing. I mean, the guy's got some bombs. He's doing this and that. But two million people versus two people. The two people won. <laughs> Think about it that way. They won. Two million people versus two. And the two million were huddled in, in their homes Oh, save us. Yeah, two basically kids shut down whole two million people city. I had a video I put on my Facebook account of the Boston uh, martial law there. They were searched house to house, and this guy was filming the police from second floor, and they had this armored vehicle with on the megaphone there say, roll down the window, get back inside. He was not asking, he was demanding. And the guy, okay, close the window in. Well, that's probably a good thing, because if you want to live, get back in your house. <laughs> Pretty much. Get shot. I don't know, it's a sad, stinking thing. The town of Boston, where Liberty fomented 250 years ago, and now it's just a thing of the past. What if it happened here? This is the, I mean, take it home. Take it home. What if it happened here in Fairbanks? How would your neighbors react? They'd do the same thing. Just be sitting in their, the corner of their house peeing on themselves out of sheer fear. I wouldn't be afraid. Maybe some worry about what the government was going to do. But I wouldn't necessarily be afraid of two guys. I mean, there's bad people in this town right now, isn't mm-hmm. there? There are. There are. <laughs> this is one of, one of the main... People ask me, Steve, well, why do you carry, carry a gun if you're so against the idea of killing people. It's like, well, you know what? I I walk to work quite often. And at three in the morning when I'm walking to work, there are some very poor decision makers out. Some of them have two legs and some I mean there are a couple of moose that were hanging around this this winter. I'm if a moose <laughs> comes and tries to stop me, I'm going to put the moose down and, and we can talk later about the ethics of having fired my gun in the city limits. We can talk about that later. I'm not going to get stomped by a moose. Or talk about the ethics and, of and, moose stew. And, and in in the same way if some poor decision maker tries to jump me or knife me, as far as I'm concerned, it'd be as if somebody had stepped out in front of my truck. I've got some place to go. I'm not going out to try to murder anybody. But if you come out and you try to commit violence against me or against my family, well, boom. there's a very good chance that you're not going to be surviving that incident. That's why I carry a gun. And, and if you know, I thought about this, if they had issued an order or somebody had said, everybody stay in your home, I'm sorry, I've got work to do. I'm going to work. And I would have gone to work. You probably could have got shot. It's pretty interesting. I mean, we're at a precipice in history right now. We saw, I don't want to give, a, give, us, give the people a pass for 9-11, but you know, when 9-11 happened, all these things were rushed in with, uh, for one, the Patriot Act. Could not get passed. 9-11 happens, Patriot Act, bam. 
now we have these detention things with the NDAA and different laws. I mean, we've seen the Bill of Rights in the last 10, month, 10 years destroyed, if there even was one. But even on the paper funny part, this piece of document is gone. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, we see stories every day of search and seizures, of police violence, of government violence, acts against the people's liberty. And so I can almost see, well, you know, 9-11 happened. Everyone was freaked out. And so we said, save us. And they said, we will save you. <laughs> so here we are again. What are they going to do now? All the representatives, most of them, are setting it up. This is, this is the new life in America now. So you know they're going to have to do something to protect us from this. Well, it's, well, what's coming? I would say that martial law has got to be the next step. What we saw in Boston yesterday is a preview of what we can expect everywhere. I, I, it's got to be. I mean, what, would, what could possibly... You're going to have to have a pass, a special permit to leave your house. You're going to have to, in order because otherwise it's just not safe. We don't know who you are. I wonder what the powers of B think when uh, they supposedly didn't really, they didn't declare martial law, did they? No. No. So, huh? I wonder what they're thinking when they're sitting back and they're going, huh? How easy was that? That was simple. From two people who shut down Boston, and everyone obeyed us. Everyone. Everyone obeyed them. Congratulations, Boston. Thanks for paving the way. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. They paved the way 250 years ago. Hope they're not paving the way now. The, the problem is one guy stand up <clears throat> stand up and say, no, you're not going to obey your martial law. He gets shot. So That's true because, you know, what are you doing? This is for the good of the people. Yes. Who, who got shot? No, he said if you stand up yeah. and say, I'm going to go... I'm going to do my thing. I'm not obeying martial law. First time you get off the street, you get shot. So got to be something that everybody do. Everybody ignore it. If you don't, people don't ignore the government one. All right. Joshua, we got about uh, three minutes here until the Fox News at the bottom of the hour, and we've got all four of our lines on hold. Is there something you'd like to do with those lines? Hint, hint. Let's take him. All right, four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, who is this? This is Sam. Sam, go ahead. So many things I would like to say. We don't have time. Uh, have you guys? I'm going to try to go through a couple of them in order. Have you guys heard of the Dick Act of 1902? No. That's not, no. That's legitimate. It sounds kind of corny, but it is. In 1902, they actually passed the law that that the Second Amendment cannot be at all altered. And there could, you ought to read it. It's really, really interesting, and nobody knows about it. We completely forgot about it. There sh we shouldn't be having dis discussions about gun control or any of that stuff. Uh, about if this thing happened in Fairbanks, I don't think that the folks here would comply with that kind of martial law. I would hope not. Uh, you know, you want to be a good citizen and not, not cause trouble or anything, but still, it's pretty frightening to think that everybody would just shut down like that. Just, uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I, like I said, there's too many things that are on my mind to mention. And one of the things I wanted to mention was when the Germans took over, I mean, when the Nazis took over in Germany, how did they subdue all of those little towns, you know, 10,000 population? They disarmed the people, told them to stay inside. Then they moved troops in as a perimeter around these villages in the night, and 100 soldiers would take over 10,000 people. And that's exactly how they did it. If, if I'm wrong on this... Uh, Please speak up and correct me, and I'm going to get off the call and let somebody else talk, okay? All right, and thanks for the call. Actually, if you, um, Snopes is still a, a fairly good mm -hmm. way of verifying, and it says that that is issue about the Dick Act of 1902 is false. And, and what actually, uh, what legislation cannot be repealed? Can any legislation not be repealed? Just just that that very idea that gun laws, that, that, a, that the Second Amendment could not be appealed. Didn't we, didn't we repeal the... What was it, the 18th, the 19th? Which was the one that started Prohibition? 18th. And then what did we do? We turned right around and we repealed it. So why couldn't we repeal the Second Amendment? 
any legislation, as long as we are still stuck in this mindset that we can create law, <clears throat> any legislation can be repealed, right? Um, Aaron Bennett, joining us in the House. Yeah, uh, you guys are talking about the next step, declaring martial law. Why would why would they even do that? There'd really be no point. They have the Patriot Act, and they throw it in anyone's face that tries to say, oh, the Constitution, that was unconstitutional. Well, the Patriot Act, the Patriot Act. There's no reason to declare martial law if you have the Patriot Act. They did the martial law with Dr. Clare in Boston. They just said go home. People did. Right, but you're, you're talking like... Um, I'm agreeing with you. Right, I mean, they don't need to declare martial law. They don't, need to, they don't have to justify anything. Ask Schaefer Cox. Do you recognize the music in the background? Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles! You've got it on Patriots Lament on KFAR. It's local talk radio. So if you don't, if you don't like it, why don't you just leave? How about that? Can't you see the you don't, because states have encompassed every inch of the globe. You know, when America was first started there, and there was only 13 colonies, and we booted off the British, America was pretty mild for quite some time, and. They were they were pretty mild all the way up until we reached Oregon, for the most part, because people could vote with their feet, and as long as people could vote with their feet, they had to be fairly mild. If you were Boston, and you were so uh, oppressive, everybody would move out because they could move out, and I think that that kept a pretty big check on our government for a long, long time until we finally ran out of land. Once there was no more border. Then you can you can be jackbooted all you want, and you can be as bad as you want, and you can crack down all you want, and you don't. You see, right after the end of the wild wild west, that governments um, became much progressive, started to progress much faster, in being uh, more totalitarian. That's just just a thought, <laughs> Stephen. Uh, when uh, the military government took over in Brazil. Their motto was, Brazil, love it or leave it. Really? Well, they were just keeping the world safe for democracy. So whoever disagree <laughs> with the government, the, with the military, they are not loving the country. They were uh, enemies. Maybe we should um, keep the world safe from democracy. That'd be great. Hmm. Huh. That. Aren't you supposed to read the book before you get your job? Oh, I have. <laughs> I, I only caught like a three or four minutes of the show, so I don't know where you guys are rolling with. Oh things. no, no, we we just started by talking. You know, congratulations, Boston, for helping to implement the new norm. And we have two two bad guys that yeah, go out I, and I, I got all that. Well, you know what? I, if you if you follow the connect the dots, uh, you go to Debka file today, and uh, Debka dot com. They are it's a real honest to goodness military intelligence site. It's not just a uh, a blog. Are those two words uh, synonymous? What military intelligence? Yeah, it's an oxymoron. I got it. Thank you very much. Haha. Uh, the the thing is, is that they are suggesting that these two brothers were actually recruited by the United States. No way. Being is that they were from Chechen Dagestan descent and sent back to that region to infiltrate the terror cells there, and that once they got on the ground, they ended up getting turned and sent back to the United States. That's not unusual. I mean, we had that happen quite often with some of our sources in Bosnia. The people that we thought that we had on our side that we sent in to infiltrate then got turned and came back on us. It's, it's part of the, the game, part of the human intelligence game. Yeah, um, I don't see what's intelligent with that. Well, it's it's the, that's the whole point. And look how that game. Hey, look how that game ended. Yeah. Go figure. All right, you, you want to go back to the phones that were still on on hold from before? You want to do something? Yeah, let's go to the phones. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? You this still late? Lee, go ahead. I can hardly wait to see how they take advantage of this last crisis to uh, take some more of our freedoms away. Mm -hmm. Just be patient, and you won't have to be very patient, would be my guess. Um, 
doesn't the state uh, out of necessity have to disarm us and regulate any any I mean explosives guns anything that um, could be used in self-defense it's in their best interest to um, have a monopoly on that since they're, oh. the, the justification for them existing in the first place is is essentially the use of force they're there to protect us and if they weren't there we would descend into anarchy and everybody would shoot everybody so if they don't have a hundred percent monopoly on that it makes it a little bit harder harder for them to justify themselves kind of like life in chicago okay Do you mean- is that a fair analogy that uh They've got pretty much control of all the weapons, but uh, Chicago is not exactly the most uh, <laughs> safe place to be uh, wandering around the streets. No, no, wait a second. Chicago has the most restricted gun laws in the world. How, how, what are you talking about? There, there are no guns on the streets in Chicago. That's right. Absolutely I just, I, zero. I understand that. And as the statistics show, no doubt that's the safest place to be. <laughs> Yeah. Tongue-in-cheek, of course. No, no. Yeah. Safest but, place to leave. Our president chastised the whole country here just recently, last week, as a matter of fact, to, for the, the disgrace that the Congress performed uh, in their uh, in their votes against these uh, laws that are going to protect us from ourselves or from whatever they're going to protect us from. Not ourselves, for sure. But, uh, yeah, just be patient. We're going to see another, I mean, just back to back to back. This is what progressivism is, and uh, they don't give up. Yeah, they probably, I'm sure they have plenty of laws written up waiting just to pass, and like, yay, Fall back. let's Fall show back. it through. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Just don't let a crisis uh, go by without taking advantage of it. And Never perfect. let a good crisis go to waste. That was Robert yeah, Manuel that, who said that. Yeah, that's, much more, that's much more concise and much more uh, to, the, to, to the times and the people involved with what we're doing today. Keep smiling and uh, keep talking. <laughs> Thanks for the call. We appreciate you it. You bet. 458 Talk is the number if you'd like to call in and sound off. Uh, all right, Mr. Bennett, and I'm, there, there are two Mr. Bennett's here in the room, so either one of you a- answer this question, if you will. At what point can we reasonably expect to get a knock on the door and have somebody outside there standing outside our door without a warrant coming into our house? and uh, oppressing us. I mean, it could, do you think this is something that's far off? Do you think it's something that's like weeks away? Or do you think it could happen today on the way home? Uh, do you not keep up with the news? Uh, you, I, you know I keep up with the news. I'm asking you from your perspective. If it's the FBI, there's no warrant required. They don't even waste their time anymore. December 6th, 8th. Or was it the 10th? 2011 at my house. <laughs> the FBI doesn't need them anymore. So you're, you're already they in, came in that situation. to my house, no warrant. <laughs> you know, the only thing that, that can counteract this is Claudio. Is Claudio? Because he was in the French Foreign Legion. <laughs> no, the reason that they're going to get away with passing more laws and whatever is because they're going to say that, well, look, we're here for your protection, and this is the law. And so people obey the law because they don't see it as, they don't see it for what it is. They see it as legitimate because they don't understand what legitimate law is. That's why I was going back to the start when I said something about liberty versus the law. The law wasn't created and then liberty became. It was the opposite. Liberty was, and so to protect that liberty, there was law. Law was created to protect the liberty, not the other way around. So when the law no longer protects that liberty, it's not actually law anymore. It's tyranny. Right. It's a usurper. And and it's not the law of, you know, and I'm talking about every stinking law. I'm talking about if it's a speeding law. That's not protecting your privacy and your liberty. That's taking from your liberty. So it's not an actual law. When... They break into your home without a warrant, searching for a bad guy. We might think, well, that's good. No, it's not good, and it's not it's not rightful law. It's tyranny. Once it turns and takes away liberty, think about this. But if it does something that you can't do, 
then it's not correct law. It's wrong. If it if the collective law, I mean, the only reason that we have this law that the people put together is to protect more people or whatever. Well, instead of individually, we're protecting a community or whatever. But if it's something that you individually, because that's where law comes from, is the individual, because that's where liberties are. Liberties are individual. They're not collective. So when the law does something that you, as a person, cannot do yourself, it's wrong. You can't stop somebody for speeding. You can't shoot somebody for texting. You can't, I mean, go on every single thing. You can't go in and take somebody's wood stove. You can't take some, wow, that's pretty good. You can't go disarm someone because you don't like them and decide that they shouldn't have a gun. That's not your prerogative. And law is only made to protect your liberty. So if you personally can't do it, neither can the collective law. It's no longer law. It's tyranny. No way. Until we understand that, <laughs> these things just keep happening because we say, well, this is legitimate law. Why? Because people passed it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. And why did, why did people get so excited to be a part of the law? Why, why? did people get so excited about going to vote and getting involved? You have to be involved, in fact, Josh. If you're not, that's a big deal if you're not. Because it's not the law. If law, this is, I'm kind of paraphrasing from Basia, if law can find itself to do what it's supposed to do, which is nothing but protect your life, liberty, and property, no one would want to vote. No, there's there, no, there there's no, no reason to. There's no hammer to swing. There's no plunder to gather. If all law did was its rightful order, life, liberty, and property, Everyone would just go about their business. But it has been perverted because it's not law. It's plunder. Right. If you don't get involved in voting and things of that nature, the other side of that hammer is against you. Either way you're swinging it, it's oppression. Right. Just, it's just uh, either oppression on you or oppression on the other side. Text messaging back and forth here. When the DOT stops you to search your vehicle and see if you're overweight, but... That is not law. That's tyranny. They're stopping you in your daily course of business. That's not protecting your life, liberty, and property. That's plunder. Because they're stealing your time from you. When you're taxed, it's plunder. Because they're stealing your wages from you. Your life, liberty, and property. Law is only to protect life, liberty, and property. Outside that purview... It's not law. We're still waiting almost, what, two and plus years later for somebody to call and tell us a law that's um, progressed liberty. Even even the laws that have been recently passed that are supposed to open things up, like that, that new law that was just passed here that would, quote, deregulate knives here in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about that? Mm. You know, the, the, this, is, this is great because it was heralded as, oh, you see now this, this is this is a great opportunity. What it was taking is switchblades and some of the other like push button knives that have been illegal, and now those are legal. You can carry them. You can carry what? Switchblades. According and to push who? Button, the, the Alaska legislature passed a law to legalize those knives. I thought that was a federal law. Well, here's the thing. Along with that come these new regulations. Now those those and all other, including hunting knives are now regulated in the same way that firearms are. So with this carrot of, we're going to let you keep knives that up to this point have, we have told you you may not own this particular type of weapon. Yeah, you can have these, but we're also going to at the same time take all of your hunting knives and put them under our protective umbrella. So it's not law. Because it's not protecting your life, liberty, or property. And we're talking about real law. This is this is not some phony baloney made up Americanism crap. We're talking about law, natural law, the way things ought to be. You mean the if you can create origination if you can create of law, law? If you can create law, how is it how is it not gonna get perverted? It doesn't even make sense to think that. So these knife laws 
You're not bound. See, this is the problem that we don't have, that we fail. We think that we have to obey these things because it's the ethical and moral thing to do. But if the law is not ethical or moral, then you are not obliged to obey it. Ties right back to what happened in Boston yesterday. But it, get, it gets its ethical and moral legitimacy from the fact that it was done collectively. Everybody gets to be a part of government, right? Claudio gets to be a part of government. I get to be a part of government. With that comes the sacrifice of having to obey willingly whatever mandates put down. That's why in all the history, it wasn't until France that you saw compulsory military service for the very first time be successful because they allowed people to vote. The people make the law. They are representing it, too. If you don't vote, they are not representing you, but you got to vote because you need somebody to represent me the way I like it. But, but the, the right to vote is the reason that people, that democracies are so vicious. They see their government as 100% legitimate. Anybody that fights it needs to leave. Anybody that doesn't agree with it needs to go somewhere else where they're not free. <laughs> That's how, that's how they got us to accept uh, crazy laws out there. Say, hey, I don't like this law, but I vote for, for them. They represent me. Now I, I don't like it, but I lost, or I didn't win the vote. So Unless you're Lisa Murkowski. Right, but no. She, no, she, no, she, no, she no, 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 Lisa Murkowski. Even, no. if, even if you go she vote. She lost the vote. Like her. She lost the vote. About her. I said no. He, even if we go vote and we lose... <laughs> We lend the, the yes vote legitimacy because we went in the first place. Everything about democracy strengthens government. It makes the strongest states. Where else could uh, a country have an internal war where 600,000 people die in the most brutal war ever in history? Oh, wait, democracies don't fight each other because they bring perpetual peace. Well, until we understand the difference between law and not law, which we've been trying to point out for about a week. Is that all? Yeah. Oh, a couple so, of days. A couple of days. Until you understand that, until you understand that you are not obligated to follow unethical law because it's not law. And when these supposed laws, I mean, I'm not suggesting that you get killed or kill. But until you internalize it, I mean, that's all I'm asking is people internalize in their own mind and heart and soul that these laws are not ethical and you are not bound to follow them. It doesn't matter what Jack Hole says. And that's pretty <laughs> That's a very broad. That's a broad stroke. Broad stroke there. There's a lot of them out there. It doesn't matter what they say. It's not law. If law is not protection of life, liberty, and property, this is ancient thinking here, but it's the truth. Outdated. Then it's not law. Outdated, Josh. It's not law. And when law becomes, when the law is immoral, then you're actually bound to disobey that law, aren't you? I mean, don't we hear, the, no one's bound to obey an unconstitutional law. Well, forget the Constitution. No one's bound to obey an unethical law. The, how many period. times has the Constitution been changed, Josh? Right, just the mere fact that you can change it means it's unethical. Because if it's law then it would only be the protection of life, liberty, and property. How many how many physical laws are there, like the law of thermodynamics, the law of gravity? I don't know how some school. I mean, how many, I mean, seriously, if, if we could create more uh, physical laws, wouldn't we, wouldn't we do so? <laughs> Claudio looks like let, he's thinking. Let me tell uh, about uh, some of the Constitution that's unethical, like 16th Amendment. What is the 16th Amendment? It's about the give government power to tax everybody. Income yeah. tax. Income tax. That was 1913, wasn't it? Yep. The same year they start the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve, so they can collect. Uh, you know, the banks can take that money. So the income tax is just to take money from people to give to the banks. Claudio, what do you know? You're not from here. Probably why we like having them on. <laughs> well, when law becomes plunder, it's not law. And that's all that we have as political law now is plunder. Everything has a consequence of plunder behind it. When 
law becomes I steal, and that's what it is, Aaron's wealth, what he makes, and give to whoever I please. That's not ethical, so it's not law. I'd like to start. It is law, Josh. If no, we it's voted, not. if we voted on it, yes, it is. I take you outside. I'd like, I'd like to start an effort, just like they repealed the 18th Amendment that, that banned the sale and importation of alcohol, and then with the uh, the 20, what was it, the 21st Amendment that they repealed it, or the 22nd. Anyway, I'd like to start a, a campaign to repeal the law of gravity, because I am finding, my, personally, that the law of gravity is really interfering with my running. I I don't know. I mean, th- this season with the ice and the snow, I have fallen no less than six times, and I'm tired of it. So I would like to start a campaign to repeal the law <laughs> of gravity. Of Who's with me? Mm, that's the thing about natural law is it's pretty hard to repeal, kind of set in stone. Natural order of things: the sun's going to come up tomorrow. What? Pretty hard to repeal. And that's what you know, it, that's what we're talking about. Our rights to life, liberty, and property is a natural law, no different than the law of gravity. Our right to na- to life, liberty, and property is no different than the law of the sun coming up and setting in the evening. And j- just to simplify that, the reason that you can make that claim is because no one else can make the claim that they're the owner of your own physical body. And no one else. How can, hard is that? No one can claim to own the law of gravity. I, I can I can grab Steve's arm well, I and no one. I, I can grab Steve's arm and forcibly raise it up. Ah but Steve literally is the only person in the world that can lift his arm himself. Force and violence. So if it takes force and violence, then is it correct? No. No. That is basically how our whole what are system you that's how our whole system is structured. Can I put my arm? I'm not allowed. Put not your arm down. I'm not allowed you to lift my own <laughs> arm. My arm's lifted by force, and whether it, and then we all go and vote if it's going to be my right or left arm that gets lifted. <laughs> Unless somebody tells you to keep your arm inside with the windows closed. That's why we don't vote in the middle for like libertarians, is because that way no arm gets lifted. How's anything get done? I don't know. I don't know. We're probably wasting our time. Let's take a phone call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, call. Are you still there? Good morning. Hey, is this Cecily? Yes, it is. I I I was told before. Well, I was here in Fairbanks and was told by a military boy not to go to um, New York. And then nine eleven happened. He told said that something was happening. If he already knew what was happening, don't you think that that was something that the United States was making happen? And, since he already knew before the fact, and then um, um, I sent when I was fifteen, I was taken off the street and taken down to a, a police uh, office and and twirled around on my head after they tied me up with straps. And then they came into my home in New Mexico and brought dogs and ran all through the place because they thought our septic tanks were some drug Who's thing. This is. This is not nothing new that they that that the the powers that be are are abusive to the regular folks and no and, it's, it's it's not and it's not I mean we're not necessarily talking either just about police or law enforcement necessarily we're talking about the structure of law itself of right and wrong and if law. I mean, I'm just gonna have. To, I'm just gonna be the broken record. If law does not protect your life, liberty, or property, it's not law. And you're not bound to obey. Right. It. Well, where does the police officer it's feel like he has the legitimacy to oppress you? Can I tell a little story? Oh no. On the way in here, I saw oh, something. This is awesome. I saw something pretty amazing. So I was following a law enforcement officer. I decided a, he a marked patrol car. Oh yes, actually, yes. Marked an patrol. actual marked patrol car had the lights on the top, the writing on the side, protect and serve, and all that. Fair mix, right. please. Cruising along behind him. Doo, 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 doo. I'm on one of these side roads over here. I'm not going to tell you which road so you can't set me up next week. So he's sitting at the stoplight. Doo, 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 doo. He's looking at the... Turns on his lights and goes through it. That's what? what? He, he went through a red light? Yeah. So I was waiting for the hand of God to crush him for disobeying natural law. And nothing happened. So I thought, hmm. I looked around. I'm going to try it. So I went through it. 
You were not smitten? I was not smote down by the hand of God either. So he goes up to the next red light and do, 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 looks around, turns on his lights, and goes through the red light again. The police oh, officer went through the, the red light again? He has Twice broken in a row? the law of nature and God's no, law. No, he didn't. He turned on his lights. <laughs> Moses turning <laughs> in his grave. You broke the law. He didn't. And then I got up there. So I knew when I told this story that you would say that. So I turned on my flashers. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went through the red light. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> you were brilliant. I'll because give you I that. knew you would say that. <laughs> All right. Three and minutes until the top of the hour. And the story? The story. So did I break... Moses' law. Did I break natural law? No. I fo merely followed the law enforcement, followed in his footsteps. I was proud because I was like, this is my leader. I will do as he does. Did I he, did. Did he pull you over? No. I kind of was wondering about that. But he's going the other way when he turned. So. Oh. Four five eight talk. He wasn't watching me because he was busy looking around to see if anyone saw him run the red light. <laughs> Good morning, caller. Looking around, making sure he didn't get hit. <laughs> Hello. Hey, who is this? This is Mark. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking if it's illegal to impersonate an officer, how would anybody um, locked in their houses in Boston, the millions of people, how would they know that the people knocking on their door weren't criminals dressed in stormtrooper outfits? <laughs> Yeah, really. It, well, what? except they were driving tanks around. Well, not t armored personnel. In what way weren't they criminals dressed in stormtrooper outfits? Oh, there you go. exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I have a thing. I can't remember the author of it, but it's called The uh, Law of Unintended Consequence. Consequences. Any action um, deemed good or bad still has unintended consequences. Yep. Yeah, like the Constitution. That was a good action with unintended consequences, come on. <laughs> and, uh, one more final question, and I'll take the answer off the air, is uh, does anybody know why the Homeland or the uh, wildlife firefighters are being trained by Homeland Security in this state? Can you say that? The wildfire... The Wildland firefighters. Being trained by Homeland Security? Huh. Yeah, I read an article in the news minus a couple months ago, maybe last fall, and uh, it said they were being trained by the Department of Alaska and Homeland Security. Why does any state expand its power? Well, I'm just wondering because, you know, if when there's a fire, uh, they try to let you out, but they try to intimidate you not to go back in with water, etc. That's pretty interesting because they do do that. We, we, uh, when I lived in Idaho, this is probably. 18 or 20 years ago, I was pretty young. There was a case where there was this fire out by Mountain Home, and it was pretty bad. It burned up like 250,000 acres. And so they evacuated these people. Well, this guy came back, and he was like, he was 78 years old. He wanted to get back to his house because he realized that he left his, <clears throat> his grandson was there, or he thought he was. So they said, nope, you're not going. He took off anyway, so they ran him down, beat the crap out of him, broke his ribs and this and that, threw him on the ground. What a lovely story. Come back. To uh, Patriots Lament right here on KFAR's local now talk I radio. Can't oh <laughs> We've got uh, a bit of a gas attack happening here in the studio this morning. We've been uh, Lysoled. All right, joining us in the studio from Big Horn Enterprises, we have uh, Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Yeah. We have his brother Aaron. Good morning, Aaron Bennett. All I taste is poo. <laughs> and we have Claudio Gomez, a man of indeterminable <laughs> ethnic background. <laughs> All right. Uh, before the break, Josh, you were talking about a story of a man who was trying to go back into an area that was uh, a firefighting incident was going on, and he was being told he could yeah. not go back in there to get his grandson out. I'm more disturbed about what's going on in this room right at the moment. So, wow. Focus. The, uh, Focus. My eyes are watering. The, so this guy was in Boise, Idaho. His home was somewhere up by Mountain Home. There was a fire going on. There was a blockade. And he was afraid that his son, grandson was still at his home, so he went back and he said, look, I need to go back to my home and get my grandson. They said, no. He said, yes, I will go back to my home and get my grandson. Anyway, long story short, he takes off. He's going to go home. So these police officers follow him all the way to his home. And once they get there, they drag him out of the car, kick the crap out of him, break a couple ribs, break his wife's arm. 
whatnot, what have you. What's interesting, it was too dangerous to go back, and yet they made it all the way there. So I went to his court hearing to kind of see what was going on. And one of the things that his defense was, he said, well, these officers that accosted me weren't from our county. Because down in the states, like Idaho, they have counties and they have sheriff's departments for each county. And he said, so they had no jurisdiction to tell me what to do. They had no jurisdiction because they were in a foreign county, blah, blah, blah. And the judge said, I don't care if the officers were from Mars. When you see lights flash, you pull over. End of my story. That, that same kind of thing, though, happened here in Fairbanks back in 2004 when we had the fires that were so close, and they ended up basically putting a roadblock up there, not letting individuals who were going out there to volunteer to fight the fire, they would not allow them to go up there. You had to have a union green card in order to go up the road. They would not allow you to go out there and volunteer to fight the fire. Well, what if we put fires out without them? Oh, then, then we might realize we didn't need them. Oh, which that's, that's not a different point. You want to, Aaron, did you want to say something? I was just going to say uh, the idea that law enforcement would supersede anything, even life and property, life of a child, is the idea comes from the fact that we collectively put them there. So they do supersede anything else. I mean, the, they draw their legitimacy from at the bare minimum, tacit support from everybody. And voting is where they get their strength from. Since we all participated, law enforcement does supersede right to life, property, or anything else. You're right, and we have to participate because it's not correct. It's not law. I'm broken record again. It's not law. We have to participate because it doesn't just protect life, liberty, and property. It steals, kills, and destroys. It plunders. So we have to participate so we can direct the plunder or get plunder or try not to be plundered. Right. That guy that called Michael Duke's show said it the best, and he, was, he wasn't trying to say... He was saying you have to participate because it's the most sophisticated form of warfare on the planet. But he, he had an excellent point. That is why people participate. They have to. It's warfare. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm still... I'm, uh, I'm, 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 yeah, you've almost got me around to your way of thinking on this, and I think what really solidifies it for me is when I think about some of the laws that were passed in Nazi Germany it, that basically made it illegal for Jews to own business, that made it illegal for Jews to intermarry with Germans. Even if they went out and voted and participated in the system and they lost the vote, that didn't make the outcome of the vote any more legitimate. The laws that were passed were still unrighteous, illegitimate, violent, horrible things against the Jews. Why would Jews go and participate in a vote about laws that would throw Jews in jail? In, in the same way, why would any of us go and participate in a process that is inherently evil? That's my, I mean, that, that's kind of where I'm, where I'm going. Am I, am I in the right line of thinking? Yeah, but if you don't vote, then you have no right to complain. So is that why <laughs> the all the dictatorships, or no, maybe not wow, but most of the ta dictators still allow elections for the people? Uh, absolutely. If you're a dictator and you allow elections, this the act of, of going and voting lends them legitimacy. Because if people didn't see him as legitimate, they wouldn't even participate at all. We're going to read a few things from Basiat. Uh -oh. We want to recommend the book The Law by Friedrich Basiat. Under the pretense of organ this is Basiat writing now. Under the pretense of organization, regulation, protection, or encouragement, the law takes property from one person and gives to another. The law takes the wealth of all and gives to a few whether farmers, manufacturers, ship owners, artists, or comedians. Under these circumstances, then certainly every class of people will aspire to grasp that law, and logically so, which is exactly what we're saying. You have to participate so you can get yours, Jack. But he also says that he wants true law, and true law is... True law is, it is not true that the function of law is to regulate our consciousness, 
our consciousness, sorry, our ideas, our wills, our education, our opinions, our work, our trade, our talents, or our pleasures. That's not the purpose of law. The function of law is to protect the free exercise of these rights and to prevent any person from interfering with the free exercise of these same rights by any other person. That is the only legitimate law. He opens his book with the law perverted, the police powers of the state perverted along with it. The law, I say, not only turned from its proper purpose, but made it to follow an entirely contrary purpose. The law became the weapon of every kind of greed. Instead of checking crime, the law itself, guilty of the evils it is supposed to punish. If this is true, it is a serious fact. And moral duty requires me to call the attention to my fellow citizens to it. Now, what, when was that written? Like a couple of years ago, posted on prison? 1850. Plan. 1850. Yeah. The year he died right before, right after he wrote right, He died right before he wrote it. He died right after he wrote it. He was killed. And so what he's saying is the things that you can't personally do, if the law allows it for the state to do it, it's wrong. Again, broken record. If you can't personally go and do whatever, but the law can... It's illegitimate, and it's wrong. So, wait a second. You're telling me that if I, can't, if I can't go and kick in my neighbor's door to look through his house for what I want to find just on my own, without a warrant, without the authority of anybody else, if I, can, if I can't just go do that, then the, the police in Boston? Let's take, yeah, let's take it to about, Boston. Let's make it way more simple. If you can't take money from somebody for not using their blinker, which I just got a hundred dollar ticket and two points taken off my license for supposedly not using my blinker. I think two points added to your license. Either way. Whatever. So in Boston, that's a good point. If those citizens there, those fellows that lived in Boston, couldn't arm themselves and start kicking in the doors of their neighbors and say, Hey, we're here to protect you. We're gonna search your house. And if you want to live, stay inside. Okay, if those individuals weren't allowed to do that, then collectively the state has no right to do it either. The law doesn't allow that. It's a perverted law. It's a law of plunder. I mean, it's a really easy, easy, simple way to think of it. When you're going about your daily life and you hear somebody passes a law or someone says, there ought to be a law against uh, uh, whatever, Ask yourself, am I allowed to do that in my private life? And if you're not, then the collective isn't all either. Because all the collective law is, the state, all the collective law is, is individuals. There's no collective anyways. Everything is an individual choice. An individual does them. So your individual rights... Rights are only individuals, so when they have laws and you have this collective law to protect the individual right, if individual can't do it, the mob can't do it either. The state can't do it either. Now, they can under violence and monopoly of force, but it's not right. And you're not bound by it. So another, another example of that is like individuals can't go and touch somebody else's body and... If you do that without their consent or their will, you go to jail. But the government can do that, and actually we have to subject to that if you want to travel around. Right. They, the state implies that it is a god. It is a creator of law. You can't do that. Well, we can. Why can't I do that? Because it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> All four lines are on hold. Let's do it. Sorry. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Steve, this is Lee. Lee, what's on your mind? A half an hour ago, roughly, you uh, made some comment about you'd fallen down about six times this winter while you were running. Is that a fair assessment of what you said? Yes. 
Do you do understand the definition of insanity? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. I do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, yes. Well, yeah, and my wife went through the same thing, and now she's in the process of having her body put back together from the abuse she did to it when she was a runner. <laughs> And so I just say you might want to you want to might want to balance your insanity side versus your addictive side to the running and see if maybe a rational approach might be to uh, run in the summer. I, I run all the I'll time. Leave with that. I'll right, leave thanks. you with that. I'll leave you with that. Hey, wait, don't go yet. Yeah. Okay. Do you think we could apply that same uh, ideology to voting? Um, I'd rather not get into that debate right now. <laughs> <laughs> you could. I no doubt you could. I'll give you that. Thank All right, you very fair much. Fair enough. That was an excellent point. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the show. Who's this? Hey, guys. It's Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, the reason I'm calling, I, I uh, noticed the uh, during the Fox News report a certain irony I'd like to point out. Uh, they said that they were going to use enhanced interrogation techniques on the suspect. And yeah, you know what that means, right? Torture. Tor- torture, yeah. Well, uh, there's a, a piece of news um, that came out the day prior to the bombing that no one heard about. It was in the, it was in the New York Times, but it was completely overshadowed by the, the bombing news. And that was that an independent uh, uh, bipartisan group uh, with 6,000 pages of classified documents found uh, that uh, Obama, Bush Jr., and Clinton were all guilty of using torture. And, uh, and then... Uh, and you know what happened to people in the past who were, in, for, for example, World War II? What happened to, to people in the past that uh, they used those techniques, like waterboarding? I think they got hung, didn't they? They, they got executed, yeah. And, uh, uh, but today, they, uh, we find that the, uh, the three, former, three presidents, former and current, uh, are, are uh, uh, now found to have, have committed torture. Uh, the next day, you have a bombing that completely overshadows it, carried out by guys who uh, appear to be patsies who were thrown under the bus, and uh, and uh, then you have the pu- now you have the public cheering the fact that they're going to use enhanced ter- interrogation techniques. Torture. Right. Well, we, we always so have how, how, lovely how we, terms for things, don't we? Right. Right. Now, keep, keep in mind, too, Mike, that w- the enhanced interrogation stuff, that was all supposed to be only for non-citizens, right? Right. And wasn't that the justification they always gave it for? It's, well, these are people who are not American citizens, but, so they aren't. This this guy, the 19-year-old, is an American yeah. citizen. Well, He's already been denied his rights, the Miranda process. rights. He will not be read his rights. They made that statement. He will not be read his rights. Why, why, why should it even? Why should that even matter? I mean, just because he's the su- just because someone's a subject of another dictator versus a dictator here, why does that matter? What his rights should be? Aren't they granted by God? No, all, only Americans. Oh, okay. So but he American, is a na- he's Americans a naturalized are, citizen. He is uh, actually Americans an American. Though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Americans that's, are above the, that's because the they're breaks. a different dictator. Okay, that's the break. That's the break. I understand now. Yeah. And you're, I mean, you're kind of an expert in. Uh, International torture laws, aren't you? Because, I mean, well, I'm more of an expert in in on the uh, receiving end, of course. But I mean, if you look at what happened to you, I've looked into that, and that violated international torture laws. <laughs> well, actually, it did. I was in solitary for 30 days, and the UN considers solitary for 15 days to be torture. Um, but you know, even more than that's more, the breaks, Mike. Yeah, more than that, I'm, I'm also an expert on seeing how how the how the patsies uh, how, how the patsies work. Since I you know I once stood in a room and watched an, a paid FBI informant pull out a knife and threaten to kill a man because he wouldn't agree to go kidnap judges. Uh, so uh, so I've seen that part of it too. <laughs> that's the breaks, Mike. Next time, maybe you should do something instead of not doing something and getting violated. You should for you it. should go vote. <laughs> that's. <laughs> if you don't like it, Mike, leave. Well, you know, and uh, you're talking about gravity. Uh, uh, you mentioned gravity a little earlier. Um, and uh, you guys read the book 1984? Yes. Okay. Yes, I have. In the in the end of the end of the book, you remember that the hero of the book is being tortured, and uh, they uh, the uh, the interrogator places a rat cage over his head. And uh, and tries to convince him that tries to convince the hero of the book that uh, that the state can suspend gravity, 
Yet the state can still use gravity in its equations for its uh, for its engineering applications. Uh, it, the, and uh, the point, it, the purpose of it is to point out that the state's ultimate goal is to control the mind of man. Reality exists within the mind, and the ultimate goal is to control their mind. Um, the the bombing was a, was a, was a great example if if that was carried out to cover up the uh, indictment of three presidents for torture, because what did it do? It completely distracted uh, people from the fact that they are controlled by by men who engage in some of the most horrific acts uh, known to humanity. But um, and that was, that was a form of mind control. Yeah, now you have you have tens of thousands of people cheering that that torture is going to be used on this one one suspect. Um, and, uh, and that all of his supposed civil rights, as they like to call them now, are suspended. Right. I mean, well, it didn't you know? It wasn't too long ago when you had uh, Graham, right. Lindsey Graham, up on the Senate floor saying, <laughs> and when they ask for a lawyer, we're going to tell them to shut up. <laughs> oh, you yeah, don't yeah. get a lawyer. You're yeah. dead. Right. <laughs> so you well, got the trial and executioner, the judge, jury, and executioner standing on the Senate floor. Oh, you, you've got that down in Anchorage. Right. You've got the, the, the you can be executed now for being drunk in public in Anchorage. So, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's let me ask. How many people have? I wanted to ask about that too. How many people died during that bombing? I mean, it's horrible. Three. But, uh, three. three. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how many unarmed people have the uh, Anchorage police shot? Uh, you, know, you know, this year so far. This year, four. Okay. So uh, why aren't there uh, stormtroopers running around uh, Anchorage uh, knocking people's doors down to arrest? Uh, uh, police. Because the stormtroopers are the ones that shot him. Oh, yeah, the stormtroopers work for the god. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make me so happy, Mike. It's, it's good to hear from you, Mike. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, that's about all I had. All right, man. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Sunshine and lollipops and flowers for everybody. No, sunshine go away today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so I remember like Obama it. was openly against... Torture. He has interrogation, which he called torture. Now he's applying the same torture techniques. Yeah, it's uh, and it's because <clears throat> that's what power does to you. Political power. We talked about that after we were going through the book, um, Whatever Happened to Justice. He lays it out quite plainly. You have a person, his whole moral and ethical background, everything he believes in changes when all of a sudden, hmm, I can push that button. Say hello, caller. Yeah, hello, this is Randy. Good morning, Randy. Hi. Um, I'm glad they caught that second suspect and that he's alive. I um, knew you would be. Because uh, that way they can get information out of him. And but they can torture far, him. I don't know about that, but as far as... Uh, no, do you think it's good that they're going to torture him? No. I, I don't even know if he's a citizen or not, to be honest. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think... What difference would that make? He's still a human. Yeah, no, no, I don't think they should. Uh, but anyway, um, on the lockdown the uh, requ urging the shelter in place thing from the Massachusetts governor um, that I've been reading just a little bit about it just now and it's very rare of course that they do such things like that I mean sometimes they have a big snowstorm or something they urge people to stay inside so that snow moving equipment can be unobstructed and clear off you know on an emergency basis but as far as this lockdown thing uh, I think it's okay I mean it's unusual but if I was in Boston I would have cooperated and I don't think it's because all the people were shaking in their boots and all that, I think it was just a logistical move to aid police vehicles to move about freely so that they didn't have to be distracted by throngs of crowds moving here and there. You know, it just made it easier to catch this guy, and of that was very course. important to catch him. And it was, and I'm so glad that it happened. I mean, what else would you want to happen? Would you want the FBI to not violate people's Fourth Amendment rights to search and seize in their own homes? I mean, I'm glad it happened, too. In fact, I'm glad that Hitler did what he did. Because well, he got a lot of bad guys. And you know, Stalin, while he might have killed 50 million innocent people, there were bad people that he got, too. There was. At least at least five or six. Yeah, but this got nothing no, to do Stalin with Stalin killed a lot of bad people. people. This That's has got nothing fact. to do with that. Though. No, it doesn't, Randy. Absolutely what it has nothing. to do with is our rights and liberties as free men. And when people, under the guise of... Safety. Protectors and safety and whatever you want to call it. It's an emergency! Yell through loudspeakers, stay inside if you want to live, 
and bust down your doors and you know what you didn't have the option to say no you may not search my house they searched your house randy that is wrong a, a snow yeah, advisory well. does not have the use of force behind it yeah I, I i yeah i agree about busting down people's houses you know they should knock on doors or something i, I i'm not talk, even talking about that i'm just talking about but that's what happened and you're <clears throat> glad you're saying you're glad it happened you know people ought to stay off the streets and blah 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 no that's not correct because that gave the state it showed us the almighty power of the state, and it suckered people into being lapdogs for them. And the terrorists won. The terrorists won. Well, let me ask you this. If you were in Boston at that time visiting there, and, and you heard that order on Friday morning when they gave it, or the request, would you have honored it, or would you have cruised around the streets just to thumb your nose at it? Hold, hold on. Uh, How is it a request? It was, an, it, was, it was a request and an urging, because I don't even know that they mentioned any penalty I, i'm sure there were people still milling around the street probably a few if i said to you randy give me your wallet or i will kill you is that a request no that's not a request but i don't think they said that that's what they said stay in your house if you want to live well they didn't mean that they were going to kill him they meant they meant uh you know don't get in the way of crossfire or this this and what do you think if you would have walked outside in that situation what would have been your biggest threat of dying there's no nineteen year old kid who's the, been hurt no, by it's police. Not a threat of dying. It's Randy, it was the state dying. threatening the people. I guarantee if you went dogging around out there, they would have stopped you and detained you and possibly shot you. Well, I I don't know what they would have done, but the main thing is to cooperate to help catch this. No, but we do know what they're gonna do. Enhanced interrogation. Enhanced interrogation. Randy, thank you so much for the phone call. We can always count on you to enliven our discussion. You've got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio online, however, at KFAR660.com. Streaming 24 hours around the world. KFAR660.com. Also on your smartphone with the free TuneIn radio app. Check it out and tell all of your friends. And keep it here, Fox News, and then more live local talk on KFAR. All right, welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. This is local talk radio, 660 on your AM dial. KFAR660.com on the World Wide Web. Oh, I know it. Joining us in the studio, of course, as always, we've got Josh and Aaron Bennett, the creators of the show and the ultimate arbitrators of its content, which is why when one of us inadvertently brings up a politician's name, we get slapped around <laughs> and made to uh, put a sock in it. Uh, we've also got Claudio Gomez here in the studio and a friend of the show and of uh, so, several of us personally. Good morning, Claudio. Good morning. And we've got all four lines on hold. Josh, where are we going from here? I was thinking about what Randy was calling in. He's like, man, I don't know. I can't understand. I don't know if... I know, I can't understand him. Uh, so, Randy, you know... Are you going to, let's just say they come into Fairbanks here, and don't call back because wait till next week. Let's say they come into Fairbanks here and they have this mass whatever, and we got to jump on a train and line up on the cattle cars and get moved out because for the good of the community, because the police need full scope to be able to do their job. Randy, you going to jump on the cattle car too? You they know, don't it, do that here. They don't torture either, right? Nuremberg. I mean, if we follow everything else they do, why does, wouldn't that happen? I, I mean, you guys want to go along and be sheep and have your liberties taken away? Whatever, go somewhere else. I'm staying here. <laughs> but they want. This is they not only want to give away their liberties; them. they Josh, want to take yours. We Josh. we voted, so if you don't like it, you need to leave. But what if you didn't participate in the vote? Well, then you're an idiot. Obviously. Then, wait, wait. So if you don't participate in the vote, does that give them the the legal justification to come and take away your rights? I don't know. Hmm. Nope. Huh. No, your uh, life, liberty, and property are yours, no matter what you do. I unless they're using enhanced interrogation techniques. Oh. Then it's I love at the bottom of the hour there, they said that his Miranda rights will not be read to him. So uh, apparently... Once they're read to you, then you have rights. But if they don't read them to you, then you don't have them. And they said that the reason that they're not going to read them to him because they want to interrogate him first, and they use the Public Protection Act, Public Protection, whatever it was, as oh, a house. way to not do it. So, I mean, and how many, three million people just heard that maybe, 
or let's just pretend three million people heard it and they were like, wow. Good thing they didn't read him as Miranda rights. Otherwise, he'd have rights. And, and I see what you're saying, Josh, that obviously the assumption is is that you don't have rights until the state grants them to you. But how stupid are we? Why would anybody be okay with that? I mean, if, aside from the point that you're making, which is a good point, why would anybody be okay with them not letting him have rights? How can we have lost this in a mere 150 years? How can we We've vote We've lost and it in be the last okay 10 years. It? I mean, if you think about it, back with Claudio. the Patriot Act, it's because it's not my right, it's the kid's right, the, the bomber right. Is he losing his right? doesn't matter, uh, as long as not touch my right. The problem is that the next can be you. When your neighbor's not free, you're not free. See, but that's the whole thing, is that we all quote, you got to get the air quotes around this, know that he did it, unquote. We all know that he did it. It's like it, it, we are all participating in a kind of a public hanging. We are all helping to lynch this boy by not standing up and saying, give him his rights, give him a trial, let us find out if he even actually did it. You're right about one thing. We're all participating in a public hanging yep. of ourselves. Okay, I'll say it. Give him his rights, give him a trial by jury, and let the jury decide whether he did it. We don't torture him. That's against the law. That's a capital law. Right. Capital L law that you're talking about. Because it's not against the little law. And all the people that the, the, and don't the, mind, and, as long as it's not an American citizen. But he is an American he citizen. He is an American citizen. Everything we've been talking about for the last two years on the show is happening right in front of your eyeballs. Why aren't people ticked off? All they think is, well, at least we caught him. I'm glad that we got him. But, but no. I He's a human being, no matter what he did, he has rights that have to be given to him. I hope that everybody's not... Uh, Life, liberty, and property. I hope everybody's not of Randy's mind and realizes the implications. Due process of law is so important. When you have no due process, just just hang it. Summary judgment. Give it all You're up. You're done. If you can't defend... Even a piece of crap, like if this guy did it, then he is a piece of junk. No doubt. He still deserves his rights to be given to him. He still deserves due process of law. That's the only reason we have due process of law. You think it's for the good people? No. If you're not a criminal, you don't need due process of law. But the reason we have it is to protect the rights of everyone to decide whether you are a criminal in the first place. You aren't hung and then decided on whether or not it was correct. Wait. Yes, they did. The 26-year-old, his brother, he's already dead. They've pu published pictures of his mutilated body. And we all, quote, know that he's guilty of the Boston Marathon bombings. Let's just pretend that he we will not have a trial. Know. He will not have a trial. He's been already convicted right. in the court of public opinion. So he's the lucky one. So like uh, Lindsey Graham said, we'll tell you to shut up. When you say you want your rights, we'll tell you to shut up. That's impressive. You are assuming that the, the police and investigators never make a mistake, and this guy is guilty no matter what. And uh, he's not going to have a chance to 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 see... If the police was wrong or not, maybe it was somebody else, but you, you don't know. Uh, you have proof that he was that was him, but uh, you don't know. So he he should have a trial just to figure out if he's really guilty or not. If the police make a mistake or not. Basia said that uh, if you ever suggest a doubt to the morality of these institutions, he's talking about the state. It is boldly said to you that you're a dangerous innovator, a utopian, a theorist, a subversive. You would shatter the foundations upon which society rests. That's what we hear nonstop. All the time. Especially the utopia. And then you convince somebody like me to not vote. And, what I mean, the entire society came unraveled. By simply demanding that our rights be not violated. That's basically all we're saying. 
I hope Fairbanksians at least realize that maybe we shouldn't be going along with all this. I'd like to think that we're smarter up here. Yeah. Is your protection worth your liberty? Is your safety worth your liberties? If they are, go from us in peace. We ask not your counsel your or, counsel your, or arms. your arms. Who's Bow that? down and lick the hands that feed you. Samuel Adams, Boston, Massachusetts. Son of Liberty. Yeah. That's Honor where the Sons of Liberty. of Liberty came from, Boston, Massachusetts. That's where it started. Now what are they? They're the Sons of Guns or something. <laughs> I don't know. A, a bird is very safe inside his cage where he don't have a natural predators there. Bang. Where are you from? Chechnya? You from Chechnya? <laughs> It's waterboard Dagestan. Dagestan. <laughs> Enhanced interrogation. We should have Randy bring his waterboard down here and let's do this. Four five eight talk is in the, did I hear you say that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. I'm sorry you cut me off, or maybe I broke off. But uh, it's a matter of respect. You don't give somebody the right. You respect the rights that they already have, and 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 if you demonize anybody, you have the right to do whatever you want because they're the evil demon. That's so, that's and, that's a good point. Is there anything else? Uh, it, yeah, it's the idea of that. It, um, it's all about being raped. If you're, and I don't think that any. If you look all over the world, Alaskans might be great, but it happens here too. Um, the 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 mayor went and, and busted down my brother's house and took his belongings and my belongings, and uh. and so. The, the the enemy, who, you know, how do we uh, deal with that? Do we point out, do we educate them as to what criminal is? Or, or you know, wh how do you, uh, uh, what's the remedy? That's a good question. How What is the remedy? Aaron, you got a remedy for that, Josh? Yeah, I'm over here remedying it. <laughs> Josh, you got a remedy? Or shall we move on to the next call and let's just let it sink in? Yeah. All right, we're letting, this, letting it marinate. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning, Frank Turney. Hello, here. Frank. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Just trying to stay out of trouble, but I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It seems like every time uh, I get on the air, my computer goes down. I wanted to share something from the Bassett Institute. Uh, I sent it on uh, Steve and Aaron's uh, timeline. And I don't appear on my computer, but, uh, you know, listening to Randy, I get a kick out of Randy. You know, the state loves people like Randy to serve on a jury. They love people that don't question authority. Yep. And that's the type of Randy. I've been listening to him for a long time. I like the guy, but uh, he just hates to question authority. And uh, uh I would uh, appreciate, uh, I got your email, to have Elio Jones from the National Fully Informed Jury on this, uh, come on the program. But, you know, her health and has been pretty bad, and she's retiring. She's doing a lot of writing, but uh like to have Kristen on. I take it you uh, contacted her. Yeah, they wrote me yesterday, so we're, we're working on it. I sure appreciate it. You bet. Yeah, if somebody could share that uh, uh well, I just sent it to Steve on a timeline. If you could share that this morning from the Bassett Institute uh, regarding the monopoly. Thanks, Frank. 458 Talk is the number. Take another call? Yeah. Good morning, caller. Who's this? All right, they didn't hold. How about you? Good morning. Hello. Hey, who is this? This is Lee. Lee, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm just, I've not heard you too often. I don't live in here. I live out of, out of town. I live by Toke. Uh, but I talk to uh, Michael all the time, to Michael Dukes. Uh, I've got a couple, three things for you. First of all, I'm going to give you a simple one, then I'm going to give you a difficult. Uh, since these uh, police officers went uh, down in Boston, had all this problem, and they got out there were shooting their weapons and stuff like this, and they saw all this carnage and everything else, uh, legally they're supposed to go and have uh, be evaluated after this and go to a psychologist and psychoanalyst and all that stuff. Now, once they've done that, now aren't they allow not allowed to have weapons? Because uh, anybody who, what uh, Obama and him said, anything, anybody has been... Mentally, you know, went to a doctor for a psychiatrist of it that they shouldn't be allowed to have weapons. PTSD. No, exactly. it, it's only it's only if you've been adjudicated. It's only if they got to the point and they say that you are mentally unstable. You are not 
capable of making decisions for yourself. There's actually a process with it. It's not something going to see the doctor. You have okay. to actually be adjudicated for them. But And once you're adjudicated, yeah, then they take away your rights. Yeah, okay. but I, I think his, his point's pretty valid. If it was a law enforcement officer and it was obvious that he was traumatized, that still wouldn't change anything. But it's different if you're actually in, an employee of the state. Yeah. And that, and well, that was Randy, what Frank Randy, Randy, shared. Randy, let, let me ask you a question. That's Randy, right? The young man that's uh, having the difficulty with, uh, uh, torture, with so-called torture? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been in combat, son? He he's not here. No, no. Actually, Randy was oh, calling. No, I think you're talking. He's talking to Aaron. Aaron, oh, oh, the well, one who has the problem asking, with it. asking. These people. T- I hear all this t- all this talk. Okay, all those soldiers like myself out there. I've been in combat. I've been where they tortured, really, really tortured. And when they talk this torture stuff, they're they're idiots. These these um, uh, professors and all this stuff that think they know everything. But unless you've been there, you've done that or had it done to you, you're talking in a wind. You're passing bad gas. Okay? That's the one thing. Second thing is that when I asked you, I asked you about the weapon thing, is that what about the old soldiers like myself who've been in combat and has been, as I said, traumatized and everything else? To, like, we saved, we served our country. We defended our country. We saved our, our fellow soldiers and stuff. And, you know, and it, so what, what's going to happen to us? How are they going to uh, classify us? That's the question. Well, that's why we're on the show. Um, we don't think you should be classified. We are for your rights to protect yourself. We are for your right to defend, to own firearms. That is your natural right. That cannot be taken away. When Obama says, this fight has just begun, and we're going to keep going until we take these rights. Well, bring it on, Obama. Just keep okay, going after it. No, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have those rights taken away. But as far as torture, I know that there are different varying degrees of torture. I have not been in combat or tortured, thankfully. But that doesn't mean that I can say that torture is wrong or not just because I haven't been tortured. I know that murder is wrong, and yet I've never been murdered or murdered. I, can I say well, something? Because yeah, I have, Lee, I, yeah. this is Steve Floyd. I okay. served five years in the Army. I was an interrogator. And I can okay. tell you that the reason why, as an interrogator, back to, this is during the days of Bosnia. I went and I served 12 months on the ground dodging landmines in Bosnia. The reason why we did not use torture or, quote, enhanced interrogation is because, first and foremost, we were not at war. We did not have legal justification for do, to, to do so. Secondly, there was no, and that, what I mean by that, there was no declaration from Congress, as in what the Constitution calls for, for there to be a situation of war. Second reason why we didn't use it is because it is not effective. The only thing you ever get from torturing someone is what they think you want to hear to make it stop. That's all you ever get. You don't get the truth. Ever. Well, yeah, from the person there, but the people that are watching what I'm talking about, I observed it. And it had a, 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 a profound effect on me seeing it. Hmm. Did, when, okay, so being, when, being, when they interrogated you, did you give them what, no, they, what the done, truth? Or did, uh-huh. Being done to one of our men. And did you give them the truth after that? I gave them a round in the head. Uh-huh. The interrogators. Yeah. That, that's, my, that's my answer to that. I, I ended their questioning. But, uh, so that, that's my, that was my result. Uh, but the other thing, I got one other question. Sure. And one I'd like to answer from somebody, anybody. Okay, it, 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 I'd like to hear it. I'm I'm, I'm a white man. I guess what it is. I'm a mixture of everything. All right. I don't claim to be anything. I'm not not, not an alien from uh, Mars or no place like that. But when a man claims to be one race, he's not, and he's two races, and he only uh, only we call uh, uh, uses one race to get what he wants. What would you call him? Racist. Hello. Yeah, a racist. No, no. A An liar. opportunist. A liar. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what mulatto is? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's our president. And who does he does he do anything for the white people or the, the Chinese or the Mexican? What what does he lean towards? His voter base. Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, no, well, I, I, I get what you're saying, and of course he's an opportun- he's an opportunist. He's going to go for whatever story gives him the best opportunity to retain his power and enhance his power. But see, that, that's that's the only thing that irks me is that I don't care if it's Obama, I don't care who it is. 
is that if a person can't be honest about what they are and do for everybody equally, I don't consider them somebody to follow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I just like to know, I mean, since you know what the word means, it's not a nasty word, it's not, it, but ever since this was going on, since he ran for president, no one ever, I've never, ever, ever, ever heard anybody, nowhere, say, use that word. And it's not a nasty word, it's not a bad word, it's not an insulting word. But it's just saying that he's, he's not being who he's supposed he, he should be. You should be proud of what you are and who you are. Hmm. Am I right or wrong? I mean, I, I'm asking no, Yeah, you should, you're right. I mean, mulatto is just, he's just uh, half white and half black. Yep, and there's nothing insulting, not, not degrading. But if a man can't say who he, what he is, if he can't be, be truthful to himself, I don't think he can be truthful to the people that he's supposed to be, uh, the, you know, um, working for, right? No, he's, he's an opportunist. I mean, he's going to use whatever makes his power work. I mean, being the first black president... It is much more. I thought Bill Clinton was the first black president. Well, he see, you went back to the same thing. <laughs> but see, you, you went back funny. to the same thing, sir. You went back to the same thing. What's the first thing you well, said? He's the first what? First black president. He's not. I know. What I'm saying is that he is using that, though. Of course, he's going to do that. I, I know exactly what you're saying, but of course, he's going to do that because it has advanced his political career. It's yeah. not right. Yeah. He is. I mean, he's a liar on many aspects for sure. Yeah. Well, it's just that the only reason I'm asking this is that you know. I, I, I followed many men in combat. I followed a lot of things, but I've always believed in a man with his word. It, that's what I go by. Were you, Actually, I'm were you involved in the Vietnam conflict then? Yes, sir. 1960. Hmm. Thank you for your service. That's, that, that, yeah, I reti- they retired me after 30 years. Well, but, can, what, just because we have you, and I'm just curious, I'm not going to make comments either way on it. I just want your opinion on what is your opinion of that war? It was a tap dance I wish I wouldn't have been on. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, I'm not not going to twist anything you say I'm or anything. Go, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to give you more than that. It's just a, it's a tap dance I wish I wouldn't have been in. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Appreciate Thank it. you, sir. Thank you. Call appreciate, it. appreciate it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots yeah, good morning. Line. Frank, what yeah, are you doing morning. again? Frank, you're again. You in trouble now? Hello? You in trouble now? Is this me? Yes. Yo, about to be in trouble. Well, Go ahead. Okay, let me give this another shot before I shoot my computer with my daisy rifle BB gun. Uh, this comes from the Bissett Institute. Have you ever thought about the monopoly of justice and how the odds are stacked against any defendant? Mm. The police officer or agent works for the state. The judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The defense lawyer, in most cases, work for the state. The jury is chosen by the state. And I appreciate this program. We just got to inform more and more jurors that they have a right to exercise jury nullification. And if anybody's tampering with a jury, it's these state and federal judges. Got Start that right. Yep. All right. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate that. 458 Talk is the number if you'd like to call in and participate before we're done. we got about five minutes left, and that is it. That wraps it up. we got five minutes. Oh. As I'm saying, we've got five minutes left. Uh, where do you go from this, though? I mean, take it home. Take it Take it to a point of application. Take it into the daily lives of the, of the people who are, are listening and saying to themselves, oh, y- you know, if the police came to my door and said, uh, police, we are coming in to search X, Y, or Z, you know, I think who would challenge it? I got the law here. This, this book by Basiat is like 60 pages. It's really small. It's a booklet. And I would encourage anyone who has a computer to go to Mises.org, M-I-S-E-S dot O-R-G, and type in a little search box there, the law, T-H-E-L-A-W. You don't need to know Frederick Bastiat's name or anything. Just type in the law, and that book will come up in PDF or ebook or three or four different ways it'll come up. Download it. Or if you don't want to download it, just open it. Read it. It's a good read. Open your mind. See some truth of what the law is. And I guarantee if you read it with your mind open, without preconceived notion that you know what law is, read the book and then apply it to your daily life as you're walking around, as you're listening to your 
politicians and potential politicians and apply what they say to what you've read and what you now understand as law and see if it's correct. It won't be. And start applying it to your daily life and ask yourself what they're proposing. Could I do that? What Obama's proposing is to take away military style weapons, supposedly. We all know it's crock, whatever. And I don't even care about that part. Are you allowed to go take your neighbor's weapon from him? No. So is Obama allowed to take the weapon from you? No. Either way, it's wrong. I mean, people can understand the gun issue, at least, here in Fairbanks. If you can't do it yourself, just because someone passes a law does not make it correct, lawful, right, legitimate. ethical, legitimate, or moral. Okay, let's take a call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is one of your neighbors. Uh, I just wanted to touch on a couple things that... I've caught firsthand. Uh, in fact, I talked to you a while back when I was uh, out there at the halfway house, and I hadn't got any charges filed against me for about 90 days until mm -hmm. they finally came up with something. But uh, I see that there's uh, we got our problems here in this town with, uh, I believe, excessive force with our, our, our local troopers here. I went up to... Uh, help a neighbor of mine about December 15th and uh, I uh, we had that brand new 14 inches of snow that fell and at the end of rolling road there's a dip in the road and at the top is the stop sign mm -hmm. well at about 1.30 or 2 o'clock uh they're happen they've had that witch hunt going on through the uh Christmas holidays where they were I think they got about sixty people off the road. See something, say something. Did did they ever charge you? You know, I couldn't I couldn't get rid of my public defender. Uh, this court they're they're not dishing out constitutional law. I I believe anybody knows uh anything more about this trust law. I believe that's what they're they're running this court system here in this town under, because back before Alaska was a state, a, a part of the United States, they uh, the ship's captains were the judges, and they could pretty much take you out and hang you from the you know the ship's uh, admiralty law. Yes, it's admiralty law, and I. I it, yeah, it's all, like Frank the, Turney was saying, the court, the clerk. All the, the courts uh, the in America run on admiralty law. I'm sorry? All the courts in America are run under admiralty law. Well, why is that? Because we're not at sea. Because we're under martial laws of 1933. That well, takes us to about the end of the week. program. Thanks very much for the calls. Uh, Read Josh, the law. Content or contact information. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. PatriotsLament at gmail.com. And the YouTube channel. Radio Free Fairbanks. And we will see you again next week. The shows will be posted here in just a little while. The last two hours will be up on the website, KFAR660.com. Health Talk is next. See you Monday morning.